Suppose I lost my sense of humor. How do you think I'm gonna recover it? Well, by simply stealing some jokes, of course. Well, today I'm gonna share with you how to recover details in the highlights where it's none, none already there. So let's say you have a photo that is completely overexposed and in the highlights, you have completely blown out all the details. There's nothing there. Pulling out the exposure or the highlight slider in camera or Lightroom isn't working as well. What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna steal some jokes. And so without any further ado, let's get started. I know, laugh all the way you want. I know my hair looks crazy and I'm wearing a jacket for a reason. I'm gonna tell you later, but let's roll the intro. Back in the saving your posterior world of Photoshop. And if you wanna go ahead and download this one and follow along, check the links in the description. So let's say you captured once in a lifetime moment, if you're married once or if your client is married once, once in a lifetime moment, and let's say the bride's dress is absolutely ruined, overexposed, there's no details. Even if you just go ahead and select the background layer, press control or command J, make a copy, and then go to filter, and then camera raw filter. Now this should work with raw images and we have a JPEG image at hand. Let's play with what we have. And even if we try to decrease exposure, we are getting no details right in there. Even if we try to decrease the highlights, there's just no detail in the dress. What would you do in this particular situation? Let's say you're the photographer or let's say you are this man who's getting married. How do you get the details back? Of course, you don't want a, a sad life later because of course you don't want your bride to be sad. So that's what you do. You steal steal the details. So here we are in our finder or explorer and I have a reference image that we can use the details from. So let's drag it and drop it in Photoshop. Where is Photoshop? There it is. All right, let's drop it in right there. All right, now if you zoom in, have a look at the details. We can actually use these details right in here, right? And you know what the ingredients are? Of course, the details that we have and the second ingredient is actually a blend mode, a very special blend mode, which we like to call multiply. So. Let's just take the largest portion we can from this design. So with the help of the lasso tool right in there, let's make a selection of the largest portion that we can take from this design. Once you have made the selection, press Ctrl or Command C to copy it. C stands for copy. Come back to the original document and then press Ctrl or Command V. V is for paste. Now at the moment you see the outline, they are blurred, right? Why is that happening? It's due to my mistake. What is my mistake? I have left the feather to 10. Make sure the feather is zero. What happens is when we set the feather, even in the previous work that we did, it does not change. You just need to change it back to zero after you have just increased it for some project. So let's do that again. If you want to add to the selection, hold the shift key and then Add, there you have it. Press Ctrl or Command C to copy it. Come back to the original, press Ctrl or Command V. And let's make it a little smaller by pressing Ctrl or Command T to open up the transform. Let's make it a little smaller just like this and hit enter or return. We can name this reference texture. Now before we shape and turn and twist and match this texture to this lady, we need to apply the blend mode and have a reserve. All right, so let's change the blend mode from normal to multiply. Now, when we do that, it's also making the bright areas darker. We don't want that. So let's apply some levels to it. Now you can apply an adjustment layer and make it complicated. To make it lesser complicated, maybe a little destructive, it's fine, but lesser complication, let's just burn it to the layer by going to image, adjustments, and then curves or levels, any of them will do. Let's go with curves because I just love curves. Let's just take this slider from the right to the left. See, it's just taking it away from the bright areas. Now we don't wanna go so harsh that all the details, even in the reference texture is lost. So we have to maintain that balance and we can keep it right in there, in my opinion. It's okay, hit okay. Now this also is applying some color to this. So we can also decrease the saturation of this one by going to image, adjustments, hue saturation. We can absolutely take it to zero or just have a little bit of it and maybe play with the hue to match with that of the current texture. So this looks okay, hit okay. Now it's time for us to apply it to her dress. So we want this as a reserve. So first of all, let's make a copy by pressing Ctrl or Command J. So this is, for the upper part of her dress. We're gonna just turn off the reserve. This is the reserve for other areas. Now press Ctrl or Command T, 
bring it right in there and then you can right click on it and choose warp and then you can warp it accordingly. This looks pretty all right to me, hit enter or return. Now, of course, there are some excess areas. You know already how to take care of that by creating a mask. So click on the mask button, take the brush, take a soft round brush with black as the foreground color, press X to toggle between the foreground and the background, and then just take it away from the excessive extra areas. We also need to give, give it a soft edge so that we can blend it with the next one. There we are. The top part is done. You can decrease the opacity if you wish to. So for me, I'm going to keep the opacity at about 78. That looks perfect. Now let's make one more copy. So this is the reference texture. You're going to make one more copy and turn it on for the reference texture. Control or command T again and bring it to the bottom. Right click on it and then choose warp. Now let's match it with that of the old one and then continue accordingly. See how we are just shaping it as well. See these lines of the warp? They go according to the shape of the body. You can also add some more lines if you want and we have already talked about it in our Photoshop 2020 video. If you want to check it out, you can check it out right here. So let's adjust it even more. See why we are going with this? Hit enter or return once you're satisfied and then click on the mask button again. Take the brush, black as the foreground color and take the harshness, harshness away. And from the sides, some extras, some extras from this side with black as the foreground color. Pretty good. Now let's decrease the opacity to 78. There you have it. I might have to work a little bit right there. Let's decrease the flow to 10% and just paint here where the design is a little bit missing. Perfect. Isn't it amazing? Let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the before, no details at all. Let's zoom out. And this is the after. Now we have a lot of details. Now you can take all the time to continue. You get the idea now. You can take the time to continue all the way to the bottom. Right here, we have a little detail. You just have to continue till here and you would be fine. And there you go. This, my friend, is my final result. I hope this video helped you recovering all the details you wanted. All you got to do is to keep two ingredients in mind. Whenever you lose details in the highlights and you cannot recover it using Camera Raw or Lightroom by decreasing the highlights, there's just no way and you cannot recover it. This is the last option. Number one, steal it. Number two, use the blend mode, multiply. And before applying multiply, use levels or curves to make sure that it's not darkening the extremely highlight areas. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would also like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching and before I end the video, you might still be wondering, it's so hot and summery kind of weather in India and why is he wearing a jacket? Well, you know, when you're in a lockdown, you, you tend to eat a lot eat a little more than usual and there's there's not much activity because we're just sitting at home watching movies or playing games so right now I'm playing Call of Duty and you know we tend to get a little fat so jackets are a good way to hide all the fat that you accumulate so that's why we are just uh, anyway I hope this video helped I already said that didn't I I'll see you guys again in the next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating Life. Let's see.